Hi friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. In the last video of static timing analysis series, which was chapter 2, we studied about what is a standard cell and what is a timing arc. In this chapter, which is chapter 3 of static timing analysis series, we are going to learn about the characteristics of a timing arc. So there are three main characteristics of a timing arc, which is delay, uniteness and slew. So in this video, we are going to cover the delay characteristics of a timing arc. So let's get started. So the delay or the cell delay of a particular cell is determined through three factors. So the first is the intrinsic delay. The second is the load that a particular cell is driving and the third is the input transition also known as input slip. So these three parameters basically aff uh, affects the uh, total cell delay. So now let's see the definition of these three parameters. So for example, we have a inverter cell and the inverter cell has one input and one output so there is a single timing arcs available. So if you remember in the previous chapter we studied that timing arcs is basically from each input of a cell to the each output. So here we have only one input and one output in the case of inverter cell so we are going to have one timing arc. So now we are going to see the delay characteristics of this timing arc or simply how the delay of this timing arc is getting calculated. So as we saw in the previous slide, the delay through this cell is determined by the three factors. First is what is the intrinsic delay of that cell. Then second is the load which this particular cell is driving and the third is the input transition also known as input slip. So here if you see this is the total cell delay and this cell delay is nothing but input transitions. So here we are going to check or the STA tool by default takes 50% of transition. So if you see the input is transitioning from high to low and hence the output will transition from low to high because this is, this is an inverter cell. So the 50% of the input to the 50% of this output is nothing but cell delay. Okay, let's see uh, in the next slide with more details. So if you see here, then we have connected the load as well to the output of this particular cell. Now, when there is a transition, input transition which is happening from high to low and the output transition is happening from low to high. So here we will have the input transition delay. Okay. So the cell delay total will be the transition delay plus the intrinsic delay. So the transition delay is nothing but the input which is transitioning from high to low and then the output will also transition from low to high. So the 50% of input to the 50% of output. That is nothing but the transition delay. Now what is the intrinsic delay? The intrinsic delay is nothing but whenever there is no input signal transition and there is no load. Whenever there is no input signal transition and there is no load present, then what is the delay of that particular cell? So the delay between here to here when there is no input transition or basically the signal which we are which which we are using at the input of this particular cell doesn't have any transition and there is no output load present. So in that particular case, the delay seen through this cell is nothing but intrinsic delay. So here the total cell delay will become transition delay plus intrinsic delay. So as I said, the transition delay is nothing but the time it takes for the pin to change the state from low to high or high to low and the intrinsic delay is nothing but the cell delay when its signal with a zero transition time is applied to the input pin and the output pin does not have any load. And by default, the SD tool measures the cell delay from 50% of input signal to 50% of the output signal. But this is 
based on the uh, user requirements this can be changed so based on the user requirement we can say that we want the uh, transition delay from 20% of input signal to 80% of the output signal but by default the ST tool will take 50% for both input and output now let's see what is in net delay so net delay net delay appears because of the resistive and capacitive nature of the interconnect okay so for example in the previous chapter we saw that the net delay uh, there was a net present between output of first AND gate to the input of the second AND gate so there is a net so if there is a net then there will be an, an associated delay to that particular net and the delay comes because of the interconnect resistive and capacitive behavior now how to calculate that delay so to calculate that delay there are different models available in the ADA industry but the famous one is wire load model so wire load model can be used to basically calculate that particular net delay so how the wire load model works and how it is used to calculate the delay we are going to cover this in one of our next video with a proper exam so hope this video on delay characteristics of a timing arc is clear to you if you have any doubts please write down in the comment sections also if you like this video then please hit the like button and also do subscribe this channels and even the notification so that you will not miss next video on this sdh series thank you very much